sound really I have a control, so I'm um, started the recording right now. So yeah. wel welcome and thanks for the uh, attending this uh, virtual startup grind event for Minneapolis St. Paul. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh -huh. Uh, and that's a be the beautiful wonder of technology is that yeah. it makes this possible anyway. So it's, yeah. it's great. Um, I, whenever I start the events off too, I want to thank all the sponsors and local hosts. So I'm going to do that real quick and give them a shout out. So um, we have actually SaaS Solutions, who's actually our yearly sponsor. They, they're actually making this uh, event possible and other events to come. Uh, we also ha are, are sponsored by Trinet. And then... Um, also the city of St. Paul. So I just uh, wanted to give them a great shout out and thank them for, you know, being a sponsor of this event. Um, so uh, essentially what we're gonna do then is we're going to, um, you know, st start getting to know a little bit more about you uh, yeah. to, to kick off this uh, Startup Grand yeah. uh, April event. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you're, you're looking healthy, you're looking good, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank seem you. Like, uh, you know, yeah. the, you have been hit hard or too, too much by the coronavirus. I know I, yeah. I, I've been enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's been. Uh, I mean, it's a word that's overused now, unprecedented. Um, but yeah, I've been. I've I've always worked from home anyway, so <laughs> it's like my life hasn't changed drastically. Excellent. Um, so and it's for the past, like, I've been count, keeping count 34 days in, in self-isolation. Uh, I've been trying to live normally <laughs> and it helps have routine and still work and Well, personally, I think it's a, it's a kind of a sad situation because there's plenty of people who are passing from this, but at the same time, I think uh, some goodness always comes out of the bad times, you know, and yes, family is sure. becoming more important right now. And that's a beautiful thing. Yep. It. And, we're actually yeah. using the technology, which our economy has been, been leader in the market for many years. And, you know, we're finally utilizing it too. Yes, um, correct. But yeah, so you're the CEO and um, anybody who's um, attending this uh, virtual event, by the way, uh, feel free to, you know, um, chat in the chat box on, on the right hand of your screen. Um, I'm not sure if you heard, Madeline had suggested that you do you know, change it to your full name, uh, first and last, so that way we can make sure that everybody's here. And if you have any questions at the end, then we'll, ha we'll answer them. If not, then I'll, I'll just talk freely then. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> with if Amber here. Questions are yeah. out of the room. Sorry? You have to admit all. Okay, where is it? The admit all. Uh, click on participants, the bottom tab, and then it'll pop up on the top. Um, that, uh, in the chat, do I have to hit chat then? Here, go ahead and make me a, a co-host and I can do it. Allow all persons, all, allow participants to chat with everybody? Um, no, so here, make me, make me a co-host. Okay. <laughs> so go to uh, hover over me and go more. Okay. Uh, sorry, make co-host, got it. There we go. Thank you very much. So I've used a different uh, virtual system last time, Amber. So this yeah, is the no, first time we're actually using the Zoom system now. I used a uh, click meeting last time and that, that, that went off very well. So hello, everybody. Um, hello. <laughs> so as mentioned, um, we have Amber on right now and she's the CEO of Circadian um, and she's uh, one of our wonderful uh, founder speakers of this month. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat box on the right hand side. Please uh, enter your full and last name. I've repeated this twice now, so my mistake. Um, so we're going to get into the uh, nitty gritty now with uh, Amber. Uh, she's actually going on vacation. Is that still going to happen, by the way? No. Oh. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's all right. I mean, it's the, in the grand scheme of things, if if you're, I mean, all the craziness that's going on, if you're bored and if you're <laughs> missing a vacation, that is probably the the best worst, the best negative feelings that you can be feeling right now. So okay. it's not a big deal at all. 
Well, I, I, I think we have a lot of people who are very interested in finding out about uh, who, who you are. Are you originally from Minnesota or are you from elsewhere in the States or Minneapolis? So I, I've lived in Minneapolis for the past 16 years, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm originally from Malaysia. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I came here for school um, many years ago. Not going to count. I mean, I can stop counting. Many years ago. Um, and stayed on and had her opportunity to, you know, I found jobs and um, I went to Bemidji State University, nice. uh, which is four hours up north from here. And I moved to the city 16 years ago and have worked here ever since. And you still deal um, with the winters okay, right? Correct. And <laughs> um, it's, and um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's without Minneapolis and without here being in Minnesota, I would not have started circadian optics so i think everything happens for a reason so cliche but it's the situation that you're in and the opportunities that you're given and the experiences that that you have um kind of propels you to to your next thing and you just have to pay attention and and look around and see what what's around you and um, being in Minnesota is one of the reasons why I started Circadian. Um, I was working at a corporate job in downtown Minneapolis, and um, I was winters, winter, I mean, during a winter time, and I was working long hours. Um, I would commute to work in the dark, and when I leave work at five o'clock, it's dark, and I would never see the sun. And I read about the importance of light um, as a health benefit and how it affects our mood and our circadian rhythm and body clock. So I purchased a light therapy lamp to use in the morning. Um, and it was a really, really ugly looking lamp. Um, and people teased me in the office. So I was like, well, this LED technology and good design why can a lamb light therapy lamb look better and that was really the genesis of my idea for circadian optics so i would not have been any i mean i would not have started this company if it i had not been in minneapolis and i did not experience that winter so something good Sometimes, sometimes when things are bad, you know, good things can come out of it. And we don't know what, we don't know why, um, but it can. I think we're always pushed that way somehow in life. You know, it could be with loved ones, it could be with business. I guess it comes uh, from yeah. all sides of the spectrum. Uh, so what, what lamp, uh, I noticed you have about six different prototypes or different types of lamps online that are for sale. What one was your first baby that you put to market? Uh, my first lamp was called the Lumos, and it's, uh, it's, I mean, I don't have it with me right now, but it's, uh, it's, um, I named it after uh, the Harry Potter, because I'm a fan, I'm a Potter fan. Um, oh, I named nice. it, yes, I named it after a spell um, to light up, I mean, a lighting spell, so Lumos. Um, and that was, that remains my best selling one. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I, I love that. That kind of hit to the, like, thing that I wanted to ask what's your favorite book, you know, that kind of inspired you. <laughs> you already answered that question. Uh, yeah, I actually was, uh, I never wanted to read the books in Harry Potter until I lived in Germany and my guest mom, she loved it so much. She said, you got to read it. And I said, but it's in German. Said, well, it'll help you German. Uh, and so I actually read it and I loved it, you know, so it, uh, yeah. So I, I'm, a, I'm a Potter Potterhead, so a big Potter <laughs> fan, um, and I name my models. I mean, I try to give my my models um, the the lamps, different models with different names. Uh, but Lumos was my first one, and yeah. I started with one lamp. And sometimes it only starts at one. Um, yeah. I think how how I started and grew the business was was not in a way that was like um what you think of as a tech entrepreneur like raise millions of dollars or raise a lot of money and then you know go about it in a very you know like in my patagonia 
stack it and you know and uh, make millions of. I mean, it didn't happen that way because mine was a product company, mm -hmm. um, and I don't have a technical background. But what I do have is I, I have, I have a vision. I have an idea, um, and I also know how to ask for things. So I figure out like I could go on Alibaba and I email all of this uh, manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, and I could, because I also um, can speak uh, Chinese, I was able to really connect with them. Um, and I went on, I was on Fiverr and um, um, uh -huh. to hire my product manager, uh, product designer. Uh -huh. So um, I was essentially, um, it doesn't have to, so what I'm trying to say is that when you have a business idea and you, as you have an vision and you have an idea, um, a lot of times what people tell me is like, well, but I don't have a tech background. I don't have a design background. I don't know how to do marketing. I don't know how to do, I don't know how to do anything. It's like, but I don't know either. So what I'm trying to say is that you can ask for things. I mean, there's so many people, talented people that can help you. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Um, I, of course, I mean, I was fortunate enough that I had, I had savings um, that I could, you know, contract out um, and uh, was fortunate enough to really be able to build out a team that is still with me today um, in building the company. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't, you don't have to know everything. Um, you learn as you go. And, and when you think, when you have a plan, things usually don't work out as you plan anyway. Um, exactly. You have to just be flexible and, and <clears throat> go along. And, but the important thing is that um, uh, getting to a product and selling it to your first customer is actually the most important thing. Your business does not exist without a customer. So don't work on an idea for two years and not have a sale. Um, just be able, be willing to put the pencil down and make that first sale because your company, your business does not exist until you have your first customer. So you, you essentially build your first prototype by speaking with a lot of um, uh, Chinese contacts and stuff. Is it pretty hard for somebody who doesn't speak English to kind of get into that? Or how do you no. think somebody like, like myself who doesn't speak Chinese should go about it? Just go there, fly no, there? Is, or? No, that's, no, don't fly there. Okay. You don't have to. Um, what you need is actually just tenacity and be able uh, the, and work hard at following up. So when Alibaba is actually a great resource, you do, don't have to um, fly to, to China and have and meet people or go to a trade show in, in, in Shenzhen to, to find your factory. Um, if you can do that, um, I think you should, but not everyone was able to do that and I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's really a matter of self-selection. When you go on a page, for example, you type in white notebook, mm -hmm. um, you probably get a listing of like a thousand listings, uh, a thousand manufacturers mm -hmm. who make white, white notebooks. But what you can do is that you can look through their sites, um, you can look through their listings, um, and you can send at one, at one go, um, send 50 emails to all of these manufacturers. And, and then only probably half would reply. And half of the people who reply, you can, sell, you can tell whether or not they're manufacturers or they're, or they're factory reps, because you can ask them questions um, to, to kind of determine that. And you only always want to work with the manufacturer and not with the reps. Um, and then when you ask them more questions, you know, MOQ questions, what's the lead time questions? Um, what, how can I get a sample? Are you willing to pay for a sample? I mean, all these questions and depending on how fast they follow up, you can determine who you can work with because it self-selects itself. 
Um, and all of them can speak English, but then only, I would advise only speak, only work with people, um, with sales reps that can, can, can communicate in, in, in English well enough with you. Um, and the speed of their communication, uh, that's very important. And then it self-selects itself. So from 50, you send you uh, an email blast of 50. And by the end of the day, you only get five. To, um, five to five manufacturers or five people that can, you know, can reply you in a timely manner, um, is willing to send you samples for free, is um, are willing to uh, respond to your questions, um, technical questions in, in, in a timely manner. If they take a long time to respond to you uh, with, a, with a technical question, that means that they are not very likely they, they are a company and not a manufacturer company. Because if they are a true manufacturer, they can just ask your engineer in real time and then reply to your question. Well, um, that's so interesting because I've always wanted to go that route of volleyball, but I've always mm -hmm. been skeptical, skeptical about choosing. Yeah, that just give it a try. It, it self-selects itself. So it starts with 50. I mean, because you find, you choose 50 who makes white notebooks, but then by the, the speed of and the quality of their communication, you will be able to um, narrow it down. But you have to do the work though. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to take like only a couple of days. This process might take up to a month. Because for you to weed out the, um, to pick the, the top manufacturer, but it's possible and it can happen. It happened to me. So I did it through purely through Alibaba, mm -hmm. and I found my manufacturer through Alibaba, and I I did not travel to China um, for the first year to to choose a manufacturer. Okay. So don't be daunted by it because they it's all these things it can be done online and they send you samples and you look at it and um having them send you samples is very important as long as you have a design i believe they can pretty much manufacture it as long as you're speaking with the manufacturer as you mentioned right yeah correct well you have a cat yeah you, well, you, if you have a design depending on what i mean now we're getting into the nitty-gritty of it but mm -hmm. if you have a cat design you can um Go to a manufacturer, send it to them. They can 3D print it mm -hmm. and send it back to you. Um, and that process, it's, it's iterative and it's, okay. it, it, it doesn't have to take a long time. Um, it's usually expensive though too. Let's say you had a quantity of like 10 products. Um, are you still there? Yes, yes. Sorry, sorry my screen mm -hmm. just yeah. went out. Um, yeah, so if we had like 10 products um that were there um how would you go about then is there a lot of shipping and export costs you know when it comes back to you in the u.s is there a big cost there so first when you work on a product you don't usually work on 10 products at the same time because yeah. i didn't i didn't have the money i was to. just doing an example <laughs> yeah you no know, but you um at the max, I would recommend working on two products at one time because uh, well, I know I meant time. you have one prototype like the Lumis Light, and you yes. order ten quantity though. When you order the ten quantities where it's manufactured there, you want that to come back to the stateside, right? So you can sell it. So was that yeah? Was that cost a big cost using Alibaba? No, I mean it's all it's a grant. It's cost of doing business. Um, and you will have to be willing to pay for for shipping to back and forth and back and forth mm -hmm. um but it's all got the cost of doing business and if with the manufacturer usually what they do is that they would deduct it from uh with the eventual promise that you'll you'll actually eventually um order a massive quantity and they would de deduct the cost of making the sample yeah then price from, goes on to the more the yeah. quantity, right Mm -hmm. um can i ask you a question where are you currently selling your product then is it via your own website via amazon via offline stores maybe you can tell the listeners then you know Correct. where they can oh, yeah. get a of course, of course. so light. what i did was um my lamps are currently on um our own website right. on amazon.com 
and on Costco.com as well. So I, when I first started the business, um, and it goes back to um, my, my like getting to your first customer, it's how I approached it at least was that the path of least resistance. Where is it the easiest for me to get to my first customer? Um, and where that ended up for me was on Amazon okay. because the customers are already there. Um, and I ended up that becoming, you know, a major chunk of my business was selling directly to consumer um, and then on my own website. Sure. And that became my business. Um, so that's my advice to anyone is that where do you find your customers? Mm -hmm. Don't think like big box, like I want to sell to Target. Everybody wants yeah, to sell yeah. to Target, but you know, everyone wants to do that. that but you have to be able to do things that you can control first and finding your customer and getting someone to buy your first lamb is something that is within your control. Um, especially now with Amazon and selling directly to on your website. So I would recommend all, uh, everyone that, that is, looking to do um, a business that's product related mm -hmm. um, to to do that. I mean, don't think about, you know, going to a massive retailer, a big retailer. I think it's very um, smart of you to say that too, because I've, I've, I've learned that even like getting on some shelves of Target could take up to a year and a half after contract signed just to get on a shelf. Yeah, so, yeah. and those are the things that are of your control. Yeah. Um, always work on things that you can control that is within your control um and the margins are so much better when you're selling directly to the consumer yourself what did so, you study at Bemidji state university i studied journalism oh, then wow. i realized yeah i realized i was a terrible writer <laughs> so I'm like well okay <laughs> well that's that um i was just a mediocre writer and i was like okay then I, uh, I went into, I, I got a job as a marketing associate Goodness. for, and then I went back to school to get my MBA. Okay. And then after my MBA, I got a job as a marketing manager in Jack Wings Jerky. They're based in downtown Minneapolis. And okay. I was there yeah. for close to six years. And it was there that I really learned my marketing chops that, you know, I learned about, um, consumer insight, marketing to the consumer, um, putting together uh, advertising program. And um, I learned a lot there. So I'm very thankful for my experience there. That's and good. it was there also that I came up with the idea for circadian. Oh, excellent, excellent. So, you know, I can't, I cannot do this uh, interview without mentioning Shark Tank, you know, because you, yeah. you, were, you were on Shark Tank. So I yes. have a couple of questions for you there regarding Shark Tank and, and your, of course, and your product. Of course. Yeah. Um, which of the, the, the founders there at Shark Tank you, were you hoping to get a deal with? I went there with Bullseye. I wanted to do, I wanted Mark and Lori. That's so right. yeah, that's yeah right. so those were the two and I, um, I won, I mean, any of what any one of them would have been great, but you know, I was really hoping for Mark and Lori and it was the reason why um, I'm still under contract, but I think I can give spoiler alert now. Uh, yeah, so that is why when, when they offer, they jointly offer, it was like, is it my dream coming true? Like, what is this? This is insane. Um, and I accepted. Yeah. And, yeah. and well, congrats. How was that Thank whole you. experience though? Uh, was it really uh, the eye opening just being on Shark Tank? Did that, I'm sure that helped lift sales automatically then a little bit or yes. got word of mouth at least, right? Yeah, so that, I mean, being on Shark Tank is, I would say, it was really a, a once in a lifetime experience. I have so much gratitude that things happened the way it did um i applied a year earlier and i didn't get through i mean i got pretty far but i was cut and then the year after i applied again so um 
another thing is like don't give up like <laughs> or like one year they didn't they, they said no but it doesn't mean no forever so I applied again and then I got all the way through and throughout the whole journey also it was very nerve-wracking because it was like hunger games every day um it was like they caught they I mean every week it was like oh you didn't get cut other people get got cut I mean it's it's really up to the time when you're on the plane to LA even when you have landed in LA they tell you that you might not film so the whole time it was like it's you're at their mercy yeah. and you have done all of this preparation spent all this money on the set um and you really don't know um whether or not that you'll film or even if you film they'll air because they would um, they, I've known people who actually went, who filmed with me, but then they didn't get an mm. air date. So it, it's all, it's, they have complete control. Um, but entering the tank, I really, I still have this memory. I was, you know, when the door opens, yeah. it opens, <laughs> the door opens and it was Kevin O'Leary right in the middle. So that was, he was the first person that I saw. So the, door, the double door opens and I see Kevin O'Leary and he was doing his, his, his really sternest, like Mr. Wonderful face. And he was, yeah. like, <laughs> he was like, really like looking at you, you know, like just like, you know, a skull. And I walked down the, and then I walked down the hallway and there was no music. So yeah. I was just, I could hear my own footsteps mm. walking down. I was the quiet, quiet on set. So I could hear my, my footsteps walking into the tank and get there. And it feels like a really surreal moment. I felt like I, I was an avatar and I was, I was in dreamland. And then when mm. I start my pitch, um, I was back on earth and then I was a hundred percent and I concentrate. I was, it's, I gave a pitch of my life and I really just told my story, told, um, the, the benefits of my lambs and, you know, and, and I knew my numbers. I prepared for this for months and I knew I was ready. There was no one else that could answer any and all of the questions, but myself. And I felt such responsibility, but at the same time, I felt also very, very powerful and so much gratitude that I was able to do that because I know that there are so many people who work hard, um, so many entrepreneurs that work hard, but I was there pitching to the sharks on the, on the carpet and there was no reason for it other than, than luck and grace. And I have a lot of gratitude for that. Well, I I have to say, you know, you inspire me just with your words right now too. Because oh, thank you. It's it's, it's a, I'm I'm amazed with everything that you've done by yourself. Uh, I've been an aspiring entrepreneur all my life. You know, I always had my ideas. Still have like twenty, thirty of them, right? Um, but you kind of you, there are times where you just feel like you get so close and you just can't get to that next step, or you 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 get to that next step, but then you you have to reach the other one, but you can't achieve it for some. You know, life happens, right? Uh, Some yes. passes in a family, or mm -hmm. the money doesn't come through like you expect. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like this give and take situation where you, you want to motivate yourself, but you're always going to come up against that wall. You have to be yeah. prepared, like like you are obviously, or always uh, seem to be. And um, you seem like you went there, you knew your stuff, uh, like it or not. You know, you're gonna you're gonna take care. You're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, and I think. I think it's life does happen and I think we have to be very graceful to ourselves. Yeah. Um, you have to, all of us who want to be entrepreneurs have a lot of self doubt yeah. um, and have a lot of guilt and have a lot, it's, and have a lot of fear because, you know, we're giving up our jobs or yeah. we are, you know, we have to be present when you know, take care of our family and not give 100% to our business. 
And I think it's, that's okay. I mean, it's really okay. You have to be graceful to yourself, yourself, because if you're not good to yourself and you're not graceful to yourself, you won't be able to come up with ideas and life is long. So you don't execute your idea this year or last year, you know, your time, you have to have the belief and the hope that your, your time will come because a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of life is about timing. And when the, you have to work hard, I'm not saying that it's, it's like all, all about luck and, you know, it just lands on your lap. You have to work hard, um, but you have, when the opportunity comes, you have to be ready to seize it. And I think that might be the, the most powerful thing that you can do is, is that recognizing an opportunity and seizing it. Um, and that, and you have, you have a lot of self-doubt. I have a lot of self-doubt. I have a lot of fear. I still have a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I don't know, with entrepreneurship, it's not like a job where you can, you know how much you're making this one year. You, you, you don't, you don't, it's all a roll of a dice. But what you can do is actually control your, your reaction when things happen. Um, I've had to turn away a container of lambs because they had issues in them. And I, that was a big financial loss. And, mm. and um, there are ups and downs. And entrepreneurship, there's so much ups and downs. But you have to be able to control your, your reaction and control your fear. Actually, that's one of the most important things, like control your fear, control your doubt. And one of the ways you can do that is that you surround yourself with people that can encourage you, um, mentors and advisors. And it doesn't have to be like, you go on LinkedIn and ask people to be your mentor, because like, it's super weird. But you, throughout your life, you have family members, you have co-workers you have you know ex-bosses ex-supervisors mm -hmm. that have given you good advice and you turn to them to to get you through the tough times and get you through the self-doubt um i'm still doing that today like i still text the people i used to work with um so that you know for ideas to bounce ideas off of i rely on my family members to to help me through my self-doubt um and help me through the fear and also talk to people who have been who were doing who've been in your shoes yeah. um if i get a linkedin message mm -hmm. with uh email from an entrepreneur uh, or people who want to be an entrepreneur that is questions related about you know product and manufacturing I I try to help them. I I try to reply and help them. So seeking out um, help, asking for help is is important when you're manage, managing through fear and self doubt, so that you can get over to the other side. I think that's wonderfully said because I think that word of fear is what stops most people from doing things that they really should be doing in life. And that, that one word alone just encapsulates everything that we face uh, as challenges in life. Fear stops us from moving forward. And if you can just uh, combat that fear or, you know, deal with the fear, I think more, more people will be successful or get things they want in life. It's all about positive optimism, like you, like you seem to be. <laughs> yes, you have to be positive, and you have to also remember that... Um, there is something very powerful about having a business that is useful, yeah. doing work that is of substance um, and something that's your own. And you have to be able to find 
your, I mean, find your why. So for, for example, like my product, I, it's light. I mean, as light lamb that as that has a, as a health benefit. And I always go back to that. And um, when I'm feeling like I want to, like I, I'm feeling down and it happens all the time because problems come up all the time. I read the emails and reviews that I get on Amazon and emails um, for my customers about how my lands have helped them. Um, and that keeps me going. Awesome. And I truly, truly, truly believe in my mission um, that is to bring, I mean, bring awareness to people like, about light, um, light as a health benefit. People talk about exercise, people talk about um, diet, but people are not, they still don't know how light actually impacts their health. I should um, add more light in my room then, you know. Yes, you it's, should. Right. Um, <laughs> and then at night, you should have no light because that you have to follow your body clock. Yeah. And, it, and it affects rhythm. so much. Yes, correct. <laughs> and it, it affects so much in your life, but just people don't know about it. Yeah. So I always go back to, to that. Um, that keeps me going. So I would say if you have an idea and the idea is, for a, a useful product, like something that can really help people that is of substance, um, just, just do it and be brave because that is so powerful. What are we, why, what is the, the point of where, where are we doing in life? You know, like if we can work on a product or work on something that can help people and it's it's a privilege because if you so, don't get it out there nobody can really live uh, your imagination live your ideas you know or you know benefit from your ideas so yes okay. correct and always it it helps to think of it as like your why and doing it for other people and it and not just like to enrich yourself because entrepreneurship, um, despite money. what the other people think, yep. it's not a lot of money, um, but yep. it's a lot of hard work. I, I mean, it's mm -hmm. not like I'm living a Mark Zuckerberg lifestyle <laughs> or I'm, you know, like a shark on well, Shark Tank. I mean, it's, look at you. Not. I still got the cables here. You're, you're <laughs> I know. advanced. I know. I've <laughs> upgraded. <laughs> so, it's not, um, it's not. It's not a lot. I mean, it's it's what most likely will fail. It's not gonna earn make you millions and millions of dollars because that is like the top ten percent yeah, yeah. get to do that. Um, and I I think that if you have an idea, I mean, if you your 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 mission is bigger than just making money, um, it helps you keep yes. going. Oh, and the question that I, I got, like, how many direct employees do I yes, have? I, um, I have, <laughs> yeah, I have two direct employees, and then um, I have other, um, it's very seasonal because of light therapy. Um, mm -hmm. We sell a lot more in the winter, um, and in October, or September of October, we have ha um, up to 10 people. Okay. But right now, we have only two when did, what employees. are the 10 people doing more of the sales part or are they do more of the manufacturing part to produce items or is that just totally done outside right so my manufacturing is done completely um in china okay. so it's more of the the warehousing the fulfillment customer service sales um, marketing um so the full-time employees i do have are my designers okay. um and yeah my designers mm -hmm. excellent um, and, and and finance. I mean, my accountant. I can't do it. Of course. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God for accounting. Yeah. Super, uh, true entrepreneurs really don't like to document too much or <laughs> do the finances, right? You just mm -hmm. gotta give it to somebody because that's a big, that's a, bit, a lot of time, obviously. Yeah. 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 I I relied on that a lot. Um, I kind of want to still stay right now with the Shark Tank. Is there something that you could you could have done differently? Would you have? 
Um, or do you think everybody should try Shark Tank, or is it just for, you know, specific people that should probably try for it, or not? No, I think everyone should go for Shark Tank. Yeah. If you if you have an idea, I mean, and we're always um, trying to take thirty percent on average. I noticed. No, that. that's don't be afraid <laughs> of that. Don't be afraid of that. But um, because it's up to you. You are on the drive. You are in the driver's seat that to determine how much you want to give. Yeah. Um, and does it? And Mark Cuban said it. Um, like, do you want a grape or do you want a watermelon? Correct, do you want to right. own a hundred percent of a grape or seventy mm-hmm. percent of a watermelon? So. <laughs> It's all a different perspective and you can True. learn from the sharks and you can, mm-hmm. it's an experience. You can learn. You have learned so much about my business while preparing for Shark Tank um, that mm-hmm. it was almost like going to a mini something like, like uh, mm-hmm. therapy for my business. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for my business because I had to give, I had to prepare so much documentation. So I knew everything down to how much, I earn, you know, how much shipping cost for each nice. lamp because that's all part of the mm-hmm. the margins. Prepar- yeah, so yeah, it's all part of the preparation. Yeah. Um, I was in the tank for close to an hour, but they would edit things out to just the most yeah. compelling parts. Do you um, ever um, do you ever have the fact of these? Uh, do you see them often, the shark people, or is it just? Uh, more or less on the show you see them and then they're they're a little bit in your life now and then they're more um Popular. i've spoken to i've spoken to um like laurie and mark and they are they are very they're helpful they're very helpful all right all right um if <laughs> yeah. you want, uh, we'll have a lot of questions but yeah if you want to answer along the way it's up to you yeah so uh let me see uh, i questions. can i can read one the next one is yeah. what are your plans for expansion after receiving shark tank capital if you're able to talk about it, that is, that was one of them. You don't have yeah. to, you know, yeah. contract, yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> so, so um, one of my ideas of our expansion was uh, to go to specific retailers mm-hmm. and we're working on that. Right. Um, and then specific retailers are like, specific retailers but i can tell you i mean it's fine um um, we're trying to get on target we're trying to get on target. i mean um the mass retailers because we believe that this is a a -hmm. product that is um that is high that is uh trending because a lot of people are trying to to live healthier without without having to to take a pill or you know that um and light is one of the ways that they could do that. Is Lori yeah. helping kind of then with um, getting you on QVC and all these other places? <laughs> so those are the things that it's all in work, but it's yeah. never just, it's never so simple. Um, yeah. And especially in the last four weeks, things have completely changed. Um, our priorities, I wouldn't say, our priorities hasn't changed. Um, but it's more of how we work on, I mean, things that are on a very much delayed timeline. Um, like the things that we have to be, to, to address the, the, the current situation too, uh, with, uh, with the retailers, they're, they're, the way they work, they have changed, completely changed the way Mm -hmm. they they do um, product selection and um, sales calls because uh, to be, I mean, the consumers, we have to be mindful of them because they, they, everyone is, is in, um, everyone is, a lot of people are suffering. Um, I have to say that even my, I mean, I am impacted also. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is something that we have to, to address. And what about international to, expansion? Are you going to start that, or is that in the makings? That is also in the making, but as um, it's like it's a more of a step by step approach. You need um, all of Scandinavia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've twenty four seven darkness. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> so we've spoken to people from um, Sweden and Denmark and Norway. I mean, yes, but specifically Scan- Scandinavian countries. Nice. They're very interested in the product and they're very interested um, in the design as well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of prom, I mean, a lot of promising leads. Um, and so I'm very excited about what's ahead for the future. At the same time, um, I also understand that the world has paused a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I think that is also part of, of the, the ride of being an entrepreneur, it's like the ups and downs and, um, and with capital restrictions and yeah. um, things that I want to do might not be able, we might not be able to do this year. Um, okay. Patience and that's is also okay. virtue with entrepreneurship yes. as you may. So, so that's okay <laughs> too. But um, with, with the current coronavirus, I mean, it's impacting everything everyone and everything shipping lines shipping times Mm -hmm. um uh how the even my manufacturer in china how they're able to fulfill the product so every single aspect of of every single aspect of our business is impacted um you might Our have land. to keep a little bit more on stock then, right? Maybe in your warehouses more. Yeah. So, so more. those are the things that we have to be to to be mindful of, and and we cannot. Um, we have to be able to help also. So I, whatever we can help. I mean, we've don't. I've donated um, land to to health workers because you know they're working long hours and mm. they they can't their body clock is out of sync um and whatever we can do to help we should we help and then but this year um actually uh, 2000 uh, this year 2020 is going to be a year of, of pausing for us okay we had so many plans we had so many promising leads but yeah. everything is up in the air now. Okay. Well, if you ever need, you know, like contacts in Europe or something like that, feel free to reach out to because I I've worked there in the marketing side for ten years, so I used to live oh, in Germany to myself, and that's good where to I could have used the circadian lamp. Yeah, because <laughs> Berlin is a beautiful city where I live. It's northern Germany, but it gets it's gray a lot longer than Minnesota, so we get sun right in our winter. Yeah. Which means it's yeah. really cold out. You don't want to yep. normally be outside, but wow, in Germany they really have this just gray all the time, and you never see any sun. So we actually have more light here in Minnesota than in Germany, which is yeah. unbelievable. I never would have thought yeah. that. Um, yeah. So and I want to say, Andrew, um, the the lamp that you have is our yeah. best selling. It's like best one of our best selling lamps because I and that was my favorite too. I mean, Andrew. Uh, proof. <laughs> yeah. He, um, that because that is inspired by the sun so i i when yeah. i use that I, it reminds me that like it almost feels like i'm having a real sun <laughs> <laughs> it sounds swedish by the way lampu or something like um that. it's actually a malay name it's oh, okay. mean, yeah so i'm from malaysia so it's a yeah. malay yeah ah, interesting <laughs> yeah so he said he uh, obviously he saw a podcast too with dr ronda patrick and sachin panda and then that's how we yeah sachin panda yeah, Sachin Sach Panda. I was like, well, one of these days, he's going to reply my email and the <laughs> amount of emails I'm sending him. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in the future for you right now? Then the next steps is kind of like wait the COVID out and then start. Yes, yes. Right. So wait the COVID out. Um, wait the COVID out. I think that is, um, I'm going to kind of try to conserve cash and wait the COVID out mm-hmm. um, and then do another push next year. Um, because I don't know when life's going to be back to normal again. With similar products or just a whole new line, a whole new uh, company? Or what do you think? No, um, okay. Circadian, I have no plans to okay. to change. Um, I, we've trademarked it. So okay. Circadian is, yeah, okay. trademarked it. Uh, it's more about getting new consumers to mm-hmm. use the land and um, okay. bringing awareness to the public about the importance of circadian rhythm because people don't know um, the importance of body clock and how mm-hmm. it affects them. Um, using light in the morning, just our lamps in the morning for 30 minutes, it can help you reset your body clock, improve your focus and energy, and also improve your sleep at night because it's a 24 hour cycle. So, so I'll give you a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So, I mean, it's so simple, but people yeah. don't know that. I mean, so I think there is so much runway yeah. about the, the, the educational portion mm -hmm. of it. There's so much runway. Great. That. I'm going to definitely uh, purchase one of them. You said Lampu or Luma? Lumas, right? Yeah, either one. Um, I'll, I'll get you one. You know, what's, you know, you invited me to a podcast. Uh, that's awesome. You. Is there any, uh, and then I saw also if people go on your site then too, um, they can t type in shark and get 10% off or something like that too? I yes, saw. yes. You can go on circadianoptics.com mm -hmm. um, and, and with the coupon, coupon code shark, you can get 10% off. Our lamps are also available on Amazon. So Excellent. just type Excellent. circadian lamps on Amazon. And circadian lamps, and that's mm -hmm. that, a discount yeah. there. Excellent. I'm guessing the, the viewers are going to love that right there too. Um, well, you know what, you're just, again, I have been inspired once again, you know, you've lifted my faith today. My, you know, I'm, I'm graced to have met you today. This is the first time we've seen or met, uh, mm -hmm. but I am totally inspired and in awe with everything that you've done with your company, Circadian. Much respect to you, much continued success and growth in your future because, you know, you are one of those uh, Malaysian Minnesotans. You know, you're yeah. Minnesotan now. Yes, once, yes. once you pass the 10-year mark, you're in yeah. uh, But, you know, respect. Much respect to you. Thank you. And I also want to say, really, if I can do it, so can you. I don't know. I can't design a product. I don't know engineering. But I had an idea. So if I can do it, so can you. That's awesome. And I think that's the best way to end this today. So thank you so much, Amber. Uh, much continued success for Circadian Optics. And you know what? We, we look forward to uh, seeing the sharks next time, you know. You can yeah. Just no, just thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, Megan, Andrew, for your questions. And thanks, Gregory, for having thank me. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.